The Ferrari Pura Sang is every bit as spectacular to drive as it looks. Ferrari's brand new SUV dash all 715 bhp, 313,000 pounds and 2.2 tons of it. Good stuff, fast, noisy, genuinely impressive on-road dynamics, feels like a Ferrari. Bad stuff, four-seat only, wince-inducing fuel economy, more sporty than all-terrain, not cheap. Except, according to Ferrari, the Pura Sang isn't an SUV at all. Instead it's a four-seater, four-door sports car that just so happens to be four-wheel drive and has a center of gravity several inches higher than any other Ferrari in history. It also has a hatchback tailgate opening in place of a traditional boot, two back seats, and although its rear doors do open rather intriguingly, they hinge forwards, not backwards, to give a uniquely welcoming entry experience, according to their designers, the packaging isn't great. The boot, for instance, is luxuriantly trimmed, but also unusually small for an SUV. Not that the Pura Sang is an SUV, remember? At the business end of the car sits a mildly detuned version of the same 6.5-liter V12 that propels the 812 superfast. Ferrari claims the engine is mid-mounted because its center point is well behind the front axle. Intriguingly, the 8-speed, dual-clutch automatic gearbox is then mounted at the rear, with drive to all four wheels being controlled by a single power control unit, mounted on the back of the V12, that works out where best to send drive at any given moment, depending on which drive mode you've selected, how much grip the system detects there is beneath each of the vast 22-inch front and 23-inch rear wheels, and how much throttle you deploy. The Pura Sang's chassis itself is constructed from aluminium, and the Ferrari active suspension technology it contains is unfathomably clever in its both design and operation. The FAST acronym for the system might be a bit cheesy, but the way it controls the car's 2.2-ton mass is anything but, because on the move, the Pura Sang is quite some piece of work. It certainly doesn't drive anything like a traditional SUV, that's for sure. Climb aboard and you sit high behind the part carbon fiber, part leather, button festooned steering wheel, but not as high as you would in a Neurus, KN or DBX. The main instruments are digitized and clear, and switch from one design to the next as you scroll through the various drive modes. All the car's main onboard functions, seats, climate control, Burmester stereo etc., are accessed by a big, central rotational button, which works well. However, the new infotainment system is seriously complex and it takes a while to feel at one with. But driving is surely what this car is all about, and driving is most definitely what it does best. The V12 engine sounds incredible and delivers an almighty thump in the back at any engine speed above 3000 revolutions per minute. The extra weight the car carries means the V12 needs revs before it really delivers, but that's no hardship, because the 8-speed DCT's ratios are short and stacked closely in the first 7 gears. It works quite beautifully on the move. Ferrari claims a mere 3.3 seconds for the 0 to 62 miles per hour sprint and a top speed of 192 miles per hour. And that's about how fast it feels if you open the throttle wide and hold it there in any of the more aggressive drive modes, of which there are several to choose from. But it's the chassis and steering, plus the way the Pura Sang stops, that truly distinguish it as something a little bit different compared with any other rival. Not even a KN Turbo GT can get anywhere near the Pura Sang's clarity and speed of response when driven with gusto along a twisting road. Yet when you want to just sit back and relax, you select comfort via the Manatino, and the dampers, steering, throttle response and exhaust all calm back down. Then the Pura Sang just purrs along smoothly with a ride that's always firm, yes, but no longer frantic in its precision. The breadth of dynamic ability contained under just one carbon fiber roof is spectacular. Headroom in the rear isn't great at all, although getting in and out is an experience, thanks to the distinctive action of those rear doors. The boot is not as big as you'd rightly expect it to be, given how much road space the thing occupies. The fuel consumption and emissions are horrendous, 
at 16.3 miles per gallon combined and 393 grams slash km of CO2. Ferrari seems slightly insecure about the pure sang, probably because it originally said it wouldn't play in this particular arena. It's also a bit toppy, even for this rarefied atmosphere, a basic car is £313,000 and the options list can easily push it north of £400,000. That's not pocket change for a series car to even the richest of oligarchs. Ferrari is unlikely to be bothered though, seeing as there's a two-year-plus order bank already. Each damper assembly comes with its own control module dictated to by the Purasang's vehicle dynamics brain, and there's a 48-volt electrical system to help support the springs. Now that electric motor, one for each wheel don't forget, delivers force into the damper shaft via a tiny gearbox assembly. Yep, that's right, each wheel technically has its own gearbox. The steering is an interesting one, because good steering is a relationship, between the wheel itself, and what happens with the car immediately afterwards, it can be undone in short order by poor body and damper control. Ferrari sports cars, more than pretty much anything else bar some Lotuses and racing cars, operate from the wrist. They require a mere flick to interpret intention, and have a habit of sticking pretty much any line you like. The Purasang can nibble at the edges of a bad road at low speeds and bloodhound a severe camber, but with rear 23-inch tires the width of a barrel, fronts are a mere 22 inches. The Purasang becomes a giant rally car that relishes the abuse, steps up when things get exciting. And they do, because this is still a higher riding car with well over 700 bhp. Honestly, this is one of those situations where if you're worried about the fuel economy figure of your V12 Ferrari, then you're probably playing the wrong game. After one long day, the Purasang swallowed 175 euros of super unleaded, and it wasn't completely emped. The information screen ahead of the driver is configurable using the swipeable pad on the right-hand side of the steering wheel, and the rest is controlled on the rotary knob in the middle of the dash. Tap the top and it rises up, tap again to select a function, rotate to adjust. Sounds simple, and it works. Standing still. Once moving, the whole setup is fiddly and the haptics inconsistent in reaction, and the car's screen mirroring, which brings Apple CarPlay maps up in the dash, is built for touchscreen. Cue much swiping, looking down and general faff, in a car as fast and reactive as this, it's not brilliant. Other than that though, there's enough space in the two rear seats and getting in and out is easy enough. The electric, completely independent rear doors have a little tab on the outside and a button on the inside, so no big reaches to get things to close. And when you open the hatchback, there's a big enough boot. Unclip the luggage cover and rear bulkhead and they both stow in the boot floor, and from there you can drop the rear seats. It's not a flat area, but certainly enough to carry a significant amount of stuff. Or a really big dog with excellent balance. Dear friends thank you all for subscribing thank you for supporting me love you.